Consider now if we had a word which was written using only the 26 characters of the Latin alphabet, A to Z. So any word written in the English language is written using these 26 characters. And we assign each of the letters, A to Z, uniquely an integer 0 to 25. That's 26 integers assigned to the 26 letters. Once we have this, we can then take the number corresponding to each letter, multiply it by some integer alpha, add on another integer beta, and calculate the remainder um, once we've divided by 26. So we can choose alpha and beta Obviously, a different choice of alpha and beta will give us a different mapping of each original number to the new number. But we would like that to be a bijection. Obviously, every time I pass the same letter in, I want it to map to the same encoded letter. But I also want that to be a bijection because I want it to be decipherable as well. I don't just want all of my letters to map to the same thing in which case I couldn't possibly know where it had come from. So I want to pick alpha and beta so that f is not just a function, but it's a bijection. So let's say we took the easiest possible encoding, which is call a1, call b2, c3, then I'd need to assign z to zero, but if I'd got that, then if I pick, for example, alpha is five and beta is two, if my original message contained the letter D, I'd say that was the fourth letter. So my input X is four. And so my F of four would be alpha times four plus beta, which is five times four plus two is 22. 22 mod 26 is 22, and the 22nd letter of the alphabet is V. So that would say every time my original message contained the letter D, my encoded message has the letter V in the corresponding place. So we can see that we've got this way of calculating it just by multiplying by something, adding on another factor, and then taking the remainder, mod 26. But it doesn't actually tell me how I would remove that encryption, how I would decipher it. Well, if f of x is the remainder of alpha x plus beta when divided by 26, so the inverse of that function, well, the inverse of multiplying by alpha and adding on beta is subtracting beta, then unmultiplying by alpha. Now, subtraction, I think we can understand, but what's the opposite of multiplication by alpha, mod 26? Because it isn't as simple as just division, I need to think of this not as dividing by alpha, but really as unmultiplying by alpha, removing the effect of multiplication by alpha. But what does that even mean? Well, if we start with what it means for anything to invert something, 
That means I need a reference to an identity element. Which element wouldn't change an input? Well, when it comes to multiplication, one is the identity because multiplying one times x gives me x for all x. That's the same for normal arithmetic. Now, normal arithmetic, I mean not modulo arithmetic, I just know that the inverse is sort of one over that number, that multiplication by two is inverted by multiplying by a half. Multiplying by 10 is inverted by multiplying by 0 0.1. But I need to think what the multiplicative inverse is in a modular arithmetic setting. So what I will do is I'll define alpha inverse mod 26 to be whichever number I would get alpha inverse times alpha mod 26 gives me one because then I would be effectively if I multiplied by alpha and alpha inverse I'd be multiplying by one so would not be changing the input. If we give an example here of picking alpha is 7 and no beta, so beta of 0, I've got the table here that I would use to find the multiplicative inverses. So in the first column, well, the first column within each section are the integers 0 to 25, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. The second column is 7x, so it's just 7 times those values, 0, 7, 14, 21, 28, and so on. And the last column is the remainder of that, 7x, when divided by 26. So you can see that column increases by 7 each time until it gets to a point where it would give me a value larger than 26 in which case I subtract 26 and keep going. So you can see 0 mod 26 is 0, 7 mod 26 is 7, 14 mod 26 is 14, and so on. Then when I get to x is 4, I get to 7x is 28, and 28 mod 26 is 2. So I can work out if I had an input of 9, x is 9 would give me f of x is 7 lots of 9 plus 0 is 63. And 63 mod 26 is 11, because 63 is 2 lots of 26, i.e. 52, and a remainder of 11. But critically, I can see that multiplication by 15 is returning is by the time I've multiplied by 7 and taken the remainder mod 26 gives me 1. So it gives me the identity element. So if I take an input and I multiply it by 7, if I multiply 15 by 7 and take the remainder after dividing by 26, I get the identity element of 1. So multiplication by 15 does the opposite of multiplying by 7. So in this sense, in normal arithmetic, I'd say the inverse of multiplying by 7 is multiplying by 1 seventh. But within the modular arithmetic, mod 26 world, multiplication by 7 is the opposite of multiplication by 15. So what I would want to do is I'd want to multiply my encoded message by 15 
and take the remainder mod 26. So if I try that here, if I input x equals 9, then I would get f of x equals 11. Once I'd got a code of 11, I'd want to multiply that by 15 and take the remainder mod 26. So 15 times 11 is 165, and the remainder of 165, when I divide by 26, is 9. So I would recover my original message. So I encode my original message of 9 by multiplying it by 7 and taking the remainder, and I decode it by multiplying that answer of 11 by 15 and taking the remainder divided by 26.